In this case, he explains, we're looking at all you need to know about the report by the World Health Organization on the origins of the COVID-19 that has killed over 2 million people across the world. The 123-page report says that COVID first jumped into humans from animals. However, the report, which is more cautious than conclusive, throws open many questions. So let's have a look at what it says. The report is largely based on a visit by the WHO team of international experts to Wuhan. The joint international team comprised of 17 Chinese and 17 international experts from 10 other countries, as well as the World Organization for Animal Health and WHO. It was published on March 30 and declared that a lab leak is extremely unlikely. So here are some of the questions that might pop up. Firstly, did the virus originate at the Wuhan market? The teams that visited the Hunan market in February has found that only 28% of the confirmed early cases had exposure to the Hunan market. So, did the virus first originate in bats? The report said that the virus could have first emerged in bats and then spread to small mammal species like mink or raccoon and dogs before it was transmitted to humans. The next theory is if the virus was engineered in a laboratory. The report said there is no record whatsoever to suggest that any laboratory in China or elsewhere had been working to that effect, and analysis of the genome have ruled that out. So what does the report recommend? Well, the report has recommended a further study into blood samples and records in Chinese hospitals much before December, when the first case was reported. The experts have asked for further testing of farms that supplied wild animals to a market where early cases were tracked. So how did the world respond to the report? It lacks crucial data, information, it lacks access, it lacks transparency. It certainly, we don't believe that in our review to date that it meets the moment, it meets the impact that this pandemic has had on the global community. Even the World Health Organization said that the team that was dispatched to Wuhan had found it difficult to get raw data. The report remains inconclusive and has left us with many unanswered questions. This treaty would strengthen the implementation of the international health regulations and critically it would also provide a framework for international cooperation and solidarity. The world cannot afford to wait until the pandemic is over to start planning for the next one. We must not allow the memories of this crisis to fade and go back to business as usual.